what driving is all about. Today is one of those days that I love doing my job for. We have the new 992 GT3 in the UK. This is the first car that's arrived here and it's gonna go out and be tested by all the journalists, one of which is me. However, there is a slight problem. This car is so new, it needs some miles putting on it before we can film it tomorrow. Now, normally, Porsche would put one of their people in the car to drive around the country, accrue the miles, run the engine in, and then bada bing, tomorrow, we'd be able to smash it on the track. But I thought, do you know what? This might be the last time I ever get to run in a GT3 car because electricity is coming. So I thought I'd run it in myself. And Porsche said, okay. So we're gonna run it in. We're gonna to tootle around for a few miles, most of the day, maybe into the night. Maybe see a few people, see a few places, and uh, Neil and I can have a good chat about what the last 10 years has been like. It's gonna be a running in video, followed by hopefully a moment when we can go bang and open up the taps. If you don't find this exciting, then give up. This is the Ferris Bueller moment. <laughs> when you just hear it going ding, 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 <laughs> We're rolling, give us a wave. Oh, see you tomorrow. I wish it was a manual. Bye bye guys. So we've wobbled away from Porsche GB in Reading onto the M4 and I'm heading west to run the car in. This is a brand new GT3. Comes out of Isaac and uh, the engine has got very, very few miles on it. I mean, as in 10 miles on it. So there is a running in procedure and it is, it says, to about a thousand miles You've got to keep below 7,000 RPM and, um, and be gentle with it. So we're going to try and do that mileage in the next day. Tomorrow morning, as the sun comes up, we'll get to Bedford Autodrome and we will be allowed to use all of the potency, which I'm looking forward to. And rest assured, it's taken a bit of time to get those miles done. So, after helping a few miles past with a bit of GT3 karaoke, we made a stop at Tuttle Porsche, a place filled with 911 obsessives who couldn't wait to look all over the new GT3 and under it. Gave us a chance to examine what this thing is all about in a bit more detail though. So the purpose of this is, have a look underneath it, it's got this new double wishbone front end, which I can tell by having driven the car on the road even slowly, totally transforms the way the car drives. We've got a ride comfort that I can't understand because the spring rate's almost twice what it was at the front and yet the car is more supple. So, take it on the ramp, have a look underneath. Big news is up here, front end. Double wishbone front suspension for the first time on a 911. It's actually very difficult to see it from here because it's such a crowded bit of packaging. But up there, upper arm, lower arm as well. I mean, again. Components are great. What's really noticeable is the amount of air management going on under here. There's just lots of ducting and stuff being directed onto the brake disc, obviously, but there's also a lot of management after the air's come through the wheel arch, being really, really managed down through here and back out on the back end of the, of the, of the wheel spacing down here. It's, it's, there's a lot of it. I mean, much more than I've ever seen on a 911 before, more than on an RS as well, previous generations. There's one, two, three, four, five fins on each side the way the 911's been developed. To think this started out as that weird, quirky rear engine thing that was a, developed from a beta. In fact, if Neil Pan's right now, there's one just there. That has become something with double wishbones, a 500 horsepower flat six. I mean, it is amazing, the genesis of this machine. It really is. So we had a good look round it and lost a load more time, so now it was back to pounding out the miles before a few hours sleep and a very early start at the track tomorrow. The sun's getting lower now, over 400 miles. This is me getting back to my geeky old days, not like the jazz hat telly stuff where I get the piss taken out of my way two northerners. Nitty gritty geeky car journalism, I love it. This thing is running spring rates that are roughly twice what they were on the old car, but the ride comfort is better. And that's because the double wishbone at the front and the new configuration at the rear is just so stable that they can run the spring race and it doesn't feel any less comfortable. There's so much control now. I don't get much head toss. Steering accuracy is superb. Can't go that quickly yet, but even now I can tell you this is a, 
a much, much more competent car than the last one, and the last one was pretty amazing. There's something about waking up when it's dark and seeing the sun come up as you're driving. I always feel it's a great privilege. Always will do. There's a calmness and a stillness, the sense of the beginning of another day. Love it. I think even noggin's not quite right sometimes. It's good to get up very early. Get out, go for a walk, do whatever you do, but go for a little drive. And already the car, beautifully flat. It does, um, it does take a little bit of a hop and a skip over bumps, but it lands four square. It's a car, the damping and the suspension movement becomes more sophisticated with speed. It gets better with speed. It seems to be a real thing with fast German cars currently, they just let it go. They think if you're buying into something that's got this kind of performance, then you'll accept the fact that low speed is going to pull your teeth out, whereas everything's focused towards this ability to drive at speed. So. these things knows what they're doing. And they've become a, a weird constant in the sports car landscape, isn't it? People are doing radical new things, but there's always this, this underlying, yeah, the GT3 is going to be pretty good. We just know that. People argue about the styling a bit, but fundamentally, we know what we're going to get. Porsche's obviously criticised for that. The 911 never changes. It's just the same for 30, 40 years. It really isn't. It's quite a lot different, as far as I can figure out. We're now just about there, so we're only about 20 miles away from Bedford. Just coming up on 1,000 miles. We will hit the 1,000 before we get there. So that's it, we've done the running in. Now for the fun. Just a few last preps from the team at Porsche in the pits, then it's time to see what this thing does when you're allowed to use a few more revs. Here we go then. I've been waiting for this for a while. The 992 GT3. This is a club sport. Cage, fire extinguisher, carbon fixed seats, Bedford Autodrome. So what have we got then? I've got a PDK car. 1,435 kilograms. I think it's 17, 18 kilograms more than a manual. Manuals are available to order, I'm told, but this one is a PDK. Um, and we've got the ability to go up and down on here and shift like a superhero, which is very nice indeed. Already, steering is bang on. So the engine in this car is 510 horsepower. It has a small increase over the old one, but who cares? We've reached a point but well, you don't need more than 500 horsepower in a street car, do you, really? And it's telling that Porsche GT3s have had 500 horsepower for nearly 10 years now. The uh, 4 litre RS 997 had 500. The last one of these, the 991, they had 500. It's enough. And Porsche is not going to try and squeeze any more power out of this engine other than little incremental bits to maybe make the next model feel like it's got a a bit of an advantage on paper, but really that's your number. You're done with it. And it feels ample to me. 346 foot pounds of torque, something like that. Torque comes in at six. Max power is uh, about 8.4. So, or is it 8.6? Who cares? It's around there. So it's very high up. It's worth revving the thing out. Noise, this is interesting. So. This car is noisier than the 991 Gen 2, and it's all intake noise. They've just given more intake noise. They're saying, in the car, enjoy more noise. Because of the WLTP regulations, you're going to have less exhaust noise. I like it that way. Steering, fantastic. There's a great sense of the grip building down the side of the car, down your, down your body, and then through the wheel. Begin to lean on it. That engine. Sensational. Oh, I love these things. Gearbox is super quick. So let's try 
a lap without being an idiot. I've got all the systems on, I'm in track mode, and I'm not gonna slide the thing around. The front of the car is so un 911 like with that double wishbone front suspension, which is the big news for the first time it's a double wishbone, you, you can rotate the car in a way that you couldn't a previous 911. Makes me want to race one of these because it must be sensational. Oh, that engine all the way out to nine. 9,000 RPM in a series engine still feels outrageous to me. Short shift to third. Grip is good. Traction absolutely supreme. Chase the throttle. Oh, this is what it's all about. This is what driving is all about. Love it. Does it feel profoundly different to a 991 Gen 2? No, it's incremental again. It just feels like everything has been worked on. It's the front of the car that's better though. Love the steering and the four wheel steering means the car turns so well. You can carry really silly speed at times. Yeah, okay. Okay, in this short exposure to the car, I can tell you now, if you have an opportunity to buy one of these, do so. together the whole package works so well the torque is so well matched to the traction the braking performance is outrageous power torque brakes turnability everything is a step on it's not it's not a huge leap but it's better and it's just as enjoyable let's let's see what happens if we turn a few things off shall we so we turn that one off and we'll turn that one off as well. You can still turn it all off, but you've got to be in track mode. And interestingly, when you go sport and track, the whole dashboard simplifies. Those silly furthermost of the five dials on a Carrera disappear because you can't see them behind the steering wheel anyway. So they've just got a center rev counter and then two screens either side, which makes a difference. Let's, um, let's bend it out of shape a bit and see what happens. So this is... That first corner of Bedford, back it in. Yeah, it will rotate, all right. What a tool. ABS calibration is flipping brilliant as well. You just smash the pedal and it seems to claw away at the surface in a way that is scarcely believable. It's a car you want to hustle. You can make small inputs in the middle of a corner and it will respond to them. Ah, it's just alive. What's it like through here? She slides. Fear not, people, she still slides. Trick. We're going to miss this. Listen to that thing behind me. It's revving to 9,000 RPM. It's a musical instrument. As a track car, it's mighty impressive. I mean, you can ask for more in certain areas, but... If you want to treat yourself to a vehicle that you can drive to a certain circuit in Northern Germany, fairly sure that it will lap all weekend and you'll drive home again and the fluid levels will be the same and you will be staggered by how fast it goes. This has to be it, doesn't it? It's still the master. And I love the way it now turns better. The battle for all Porsche engineers throughout the ages has been to make the car turn because being rear-engined, it is a flawed piece of physics, but with this new front axle, it's got double the spring rate of the old GT3, and yet it feels just as supple. The whole car is 
better connected. Let's talk about what it's like on the road. I ran the car in, as, as you saw in the film. So I spent hours in it at medium and low speed on the UK roads. At low speed, the ride is busy. The ride is busy, but what did you expect? It says GT3 on the back. It's going to be busy. When you get up it a bit, the damping settles and the car at motorway speeds is surprisingly comfortable. In fact, that new Michelin tire, the sidewall is so sophisticated working with the suspension, I think you could be forgiven for thinking you're in a Carrera. There is a but, and that is that if you build the speed up on a bumpy B road or A road, it can get quite busy, but then it's always been like that in GT3s. They are designed to work on smooth surfaces and Porsche has never made any apology for that. For me, it's a bit of a disappointment if you live in the UK because you know there are certain situations where the thing is just a bit too busy on those rough surfaces, but the rest of the time on the road, it's, it's a fantastic street car and the engine is just sensational. And I, I love the fact that actually at times, I'm sure a Carrera T that had a you know, some fancy performance tune on it. It might be quicker in a straight line, but who cares, because you've got this engine. And again, it's the all-round package, isn't it? Porsche is so good at this. I'm going to miss these things when they don't make them anymore. And maybe that should be the summary. You probably could pick holes in this car. A bit rough at times on the road. Not as much torque as so many turbo rivals. Maybe not quite as fast in a straight line as some of them. But as a celebration of where we've got to in 2021, it's amazing. And when they're gone, we're going to really miss them. So if you can buy one of these, and I know it's a big if these days, just buy one. Because it's utterly glorious. And that noise. Oh. Now, as many of you may know, I don't like offering an opinion on the way a car looks. What's interesting about this new GT3 is when it was covered up with a small amount of camouflage, I wasn't sure about it. And now they've removed it, I am sure about it. It looks fantastic on the road. It's a big car, wider and longer, obviously, than before. But that controversial swan's neck rear wing really does work. And the whole thing is just so well proportioned. And in this new shark blue color, boy, does it garner some attention? Black wheels should, of course, be banned from any car that's going to be photographed because they end up disappearing. But other than that, drink it in, have a look round, and tell me this doesn't look a bit like, this is a cliche, a racing car for the road. So it's not a huge improvement in any single area, but when you look at all the individual aspects, that are better, the cumulative effect. It's just a better car than the last one. And this is the special bit. The 911 shape is so familiar to us now that you forget that underneath this thing that looks like any old 911 is one of the most exciting cars money can buy. <laughs>